today I would like to share with you my experience in learning computer science and programming. Not only learning, but also teaching. And uh, besides that, I want to share with you um, a new way of uh, teaching programming, teaching computer science that me and my students were trying to uh, bring to educational institutions across uh, Korea. But uh, before I start telling you about this new uh, project that we are involved in, I want to give you a short overview of my love story. But not the love story that you think. It's a... Uh... Oh, hold on. I think it's kind of... Okay. It's a... It's a love story that I, I fell in love in 1987 when I was at the age of six. Yeah, so um, in 1987, I visited my uncle's uh, house and he was a professor at that time. He was uh, uh, teaching uh, electronics, electrotechnics. And uh, basically at his house, I saw something that I've never seen before. Imagine six years old uh, kid seeing a computer computer that entirely built by my uncle. So it didn't look very appealing, looked a little bit ugly. It's not like all modern computers that you see these days. This was a bunch of wires connecting uh, microchips, but it was working. And that time, the first time I saw a uh, computer game, and I was definitely I fell in love with this. So in uh, 1990, uh, okay, 1999, uh, 19, 89, okay, guys, it's, yeah, um, so uh, I begged my parents to buy me a computer, and I got my first computer, start playing games just like uh, you guys, uh, most modern kids, they start with computers playing games. And uh, 1991, that was the time when uh, I got my first personal computer, IBM PC, and uh, that, that's, that's when I started learning programming. Basic, probably you've heard of, or machine language learning, that, the machine uh, assembler language that is shown here. It's one of the toughest language, languages to learn. And uh, before enrolling to university, I knew what I want to study. It was, of course, computer science was, of course, programming. And I was anticipating that when I enter the school, I will see students just like me, who loves computers, who spends all the time in front of computer doing programming. But unfortunately, I was uh, pleasantly surprised that, uh, to say the least, the average level of programming was quite poor. Uh, nevertheless, the program that I uh, enrolled was uh, software development. And this program was just open. It was very prestigious. It was very hard to get. So of course I anticipated that many students will be good at programming. They were good at learning. They had brilliant, fascinating uh, memory skills, uh, learning skills. But unfortunately, at programming, they were falling behind. Uh, that, that surprised me a lot. So now, becoming an uh, educator, uh, I started digging into this, start asking questions. Why is that? Why some students are good at programming and others are not? So I found out that there are basically two reasons for that, main reasons. First of all, um, some students get into general engineering uh, majors or computer science majors because their parents uh, recommend them, or high school t teachers recommend them to study computer science because it's easy to find a job, it's, uh, it's easy to become successful in terms of uh, your paycheck, and so on. So they enter. And the second reason is that many students um, lack a background in computer science. They don't have enough uh, programming skills prior entering to the school. So when they enter and they see some other students who are doing better in programming, they are uh, demotivated, right? So, um, besides these two reasons, one of the core, I would say, core reason why students are demotivated, not enough motivated to study computer science, to study programming, is that computer science 
common name, it's a common opinion, is boring, right? Even uh, British Minister of uh, State uh, uh, for Universities and Science, David Wells, said that uh, IT computer science courses at colleges, universities, high schools are just boring, extremely catastrophically boring. They're putting off people. So we need to change that. We need to make computer science more fun to learn. And uh, by doing that, we will engage students into learning process. So often, uh, by passing computer science, uh, uh, co computer classrooms in the evenings, I see students playing computer games at night. And uh, I start questioning myself. Well, if they're already spending time in the computer science, in the computer classroom playing computer games, why don't we combine computer games, computer games experience, and learning programming into something, something that could uh, engage students into playing and programming at the same time? So, together with my students, we come up with this idea of a robot platform. So using this robot platform, students can uh, compete with each other or uh, solve various tasks. And if they set, uh, solve this task within a given time, they win the game. So before I give you an example of what kind of games students solve uh, or play, I want to, to tell you about some advantages of this platform. First of all, this platform is very easy to assemble. It literally takes a couple of minutes to set, set this up. Secondly, uh, because all robots are controlled via this small server that is connected to the internet, students can access these robots from anywhere in the world, whether it's a classroom or a dormitory, Kisuksa, right, or somewhere else. They can easily access it, they can do homework or they can uh, play with other students from their houses, from their homes. And uh, the, the, the third kind of uh, point of our platform is that based on this platform, we can develop a whole new courses. Or we can use this platform as a supplementary tool in existing courses. For example, creative design, or uh, C language program, Java language program, or um, control theory. So all these courses can use this platform. We already have a, a curriculum for that. Well, uh, here is an example of a program that student has to implement. So here, a robot has to follow uh, a line that is written, that is drawn on a screen, so it's a virtual line, but the robot has to actually follow this virtual line in the real world. Another example is a uh, vacuum cleaner problem when a robot has to be programmed in a way that it has to cover uh, certain, a given area with, uh, within the shortest time. And those students who can compete, complete this win the game. Um, here in this slide is an example of a C language program that controls the robot. So basically you can see that this, the API is extremely simple. These two lines of code only these two lines of code will make robot move forward and turn, turn left. On the right side, you can see an example where a student had to program a robot to look for a, a pattern, a black square, right? And those students who, um, whose robot can do it within a given time win the game. So here we can either make uh, students compete with each other or we can make students to uh, accomplish this problem within a certain time and then they win the game. So in both ways are possible. So to check whether we are on the right track, we ask students if they like the experience of, of uh, programming these robots and playing with these robots, competing with each other or not. And 77% said that they have uh, excellent experience. They really enjoy it. 18% said it was good, and 5% said not bad. We also had other options, like it was very bad and an awkward experience, but none of the students selected that. The second question we asked, well, if you like this platform, if you like this experience, what exactly do you like? And 45% uh, of students said they like hands-on experience. They can deal with something real, not only 
that is, they, they see something on the screen moving, but something that moves in the real world. And 27% uh, like the teamwork, collaboration. It's often the case when some students are doing better than others, so when they work in a team, they can help each other and uh, teach each other. 14% uh, said that they like sense of accomplishment, 9% might, uh, they motivated to study it more, and 5% said they just in, enjoyed it, it was really fun. So by, um, by developing this platform, we are aiming at making computer science education and programming more fun. When it's fun, you want to do that. Not because it's, it's, uh, you have to do it because of your work or because, because of a good grade, but because you enjoy it, right? And that motivates you to learn. That motivates you to uh, improve yourself, improve your programming skills. So I'm welcome, welcoming you all to try our platform. And I want to say that programming can be made fun. And we're making it fun. Thank you very much.